folks, this is Pastor Mike Hoggard, pastor of Bethel Church in Festus, Missouri, and head of prophetic research ministry with another Watchman video broadcast. You watchers have been busy, haven't you? You've been watching, you're watching the whole 11-11-11 thing that's going to take place. We will be dealing with that. You've been watching some other things, and a lot of you caught on to this one as soon as it came out. I'm still getting emails of people telling me this went on this week. Vatican calls for Central World Bank. In a statement Monday, the Vatican called for major reforms in the world financial system, asking for, quote, a global public authority to rule over institutions responsible for inequalities and distortions of capitalist development. Prepared by the Pontifical Council for Justice and Peace. That sounds so holy and religious. The 41-page document entitled, Toward Reforming the International Financial and Monetary Systems in the Context of Global Public Authority, <sighs> emphasize the need for a global monetary policy body removed from the national interest. Take a look at that. The statement even listed specific reforms including a tax on financial transactions and making bailouts conditional on virtuous behavior from banks. Condemning the quote, the idolatry of the market. I got to Stop right here. I got to stop right here. I have a lot of comments to make on this and a lot of scriptures to give, but I got to stop right here. Here, here is we, we have an expression in America. It came from the South. Came from our from our country raising. Okay, that's the pot calling the kettle black. Okay, the pot is calling the kettle black. Um, here we have the world's largest idolatry system or idolatrous system in the world. We have the, the most number of people in the entire world who are idol worshippers who pray to statues is the Roman Catholic system. Largest in the world. They're telling the banks that they're idolatrous. Okay, That's the pot calling the kettle black. Con, uh, con, condemning the idolatry of the market. The report said the economic downturn revealed behaviors like selfishness, collective greed, and hoarding of goods on a great scale. In what might have been a reference to Occupy Wall Street, the Vatican warned if no solutions are found to the various terms of or various forms of injustice, the negative effects that will follow on the social, political, and economic level will be destined to create a climate of growing hostility and even violence and ultimately undermine the very foundations of democratic institutions, even, uh, even the ones considered most solid. Now, I'm going to back up here on this thing. Here, I want you to think of, and, and while I'm going over this, I want you to think of this idea of God and money. Okay, God and, and money. And, and the two masters that they represent, which, by the way, you, you, can't, you can't have two masters. You can only have one. You can either have God or you can have what represents the God of this world. It's even, we have like the all-seeing eye of pyramid on the back of our one dollar bill. And then it says, in God we trust. I wonder what God it is that that refers to. But anyway, you cannot serve the God whose earthly representation is a dollar bill or currency or money. Uh, backing up here. They talk about uh, they need a global public authority to rule over institutions. Now I want you to think about this. Here is the Vatican. This is the, now this is a religious institution. I have scriptures on this. We're going to get to it in a minute. The Vatican, a religious institution, telling not just, uh, let's see, the Vatican is in Rome, which is in Italy. They're not just telling the Italian prime minister, um, hey, you, you, we, need to, we need to control all the banks. They're not just telling the European Union. They're telling the entire world. They're telling the entire world that every bank in the world needs to be under a centralized control. Okay, A, a group of enlightened pious, holy men who seek only to serve God, uh, a, a group whose, uh, whose decisions can never be challenged or never be questioned or never be appealed to rule over 
every single form of currency and transaction, monetary transaction, that happens throughout the entire world. This is, this is, what, this is what the Vatican is saying. I have scriptures for this. Um, the need for a global monetary policy body removed from national interest. Now, I want you to think about this. Okay, Think about this. Nations are groups of people that rule over themselves. They have a right to rule over themselves. Okay, That's not what the devil wants in the last days. He wants all of the nations to come under his big gigantic oak tree so that he can rule over them. And I used to work for a guy who's very wise, very guys, very wise person. And he used to tell me, Mike, do you know what the golden rule is? And I'm going, yeah, I think I know what the Bible one is. And he said, Mike, the golden rule is, he who has the gold rules. Really what he was telling me was, Mike, you work for me, I make the decisions, therefore it's my money, whether I gain or lose, you have to do what I say. And I'm going, you know, that's, that's pretty smart. But taking that concept on a global scale, the idea, he who has the gold rules. Okay? Doesn't matter what laws are passed, doesn't matter what policy you have, doesn't matter whether you're an independent, Democrat, Republican, uh, wh whatever party it is, in whatever country you are, whoever controls the checks and the cash, those are the people that are really in charge. Those are the ones. And the Vatican says, we, we, need, we need somebody, we need a group of very pious men, holy men, reverent men, you know, like maybe the Vatican people. Uh, to rule over all the banks. Uh, let's this idea, this idea of uh, of religion ruling over money, or religion having anything to do with this total control system of money. I want you to think about where that's leading. Those of you who study Bible prophecy, those of you who believe the scriptures and believe that it is the absolute rule and guide to everything that is going on, you get it. This is why you sent it to me. You understand what this is all about. Revelation chapter 13. We have, we have two beasts that are talked about in Revelation chapter 13. We have the beast that rises up out of the sea. Seven heads, ten horns, probably some fangs and, and claws. And just this real evil, nasty looking beast. And he is going to rule and reign over the entire earth. No one is going to be able to make war with him. Uh, and then we have another beast representing a religious power or a religious structure in the world. He rises up, and though he speaks as a dragon, he looks like a lamb. And the Bible says in Revelation 13, verse 14, "...and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live." And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Now look in verse 16. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And now notice this now. Now I want you to get this. Here is... The false prophet, the, the beast that rises up out of the earth, who does miracles and lying signs and wonders and builds an image and calls for everyone to worship this image of this beast. That's a religious service. That's idolatry. That's idol worship. Remember, who is the biggest uh, proponent of worshiping statues of gods in the entire world? It's the Vatican. They're the ones. They're the, they're the top dog of all of this. Okay, So we have a religious system and we have a religious false prophet who not only, not only knows that he can control the religions of the world and builds this image of a beast and causes everyone to worship this image. Doesn't force them. He causes them. Then he causes them not forces them. He causes them to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. And the whole purpose of this mark is so that no one, no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. This, was, this is about total financial control of everything. Now, let's just stop and think about this. If you, if you let's, let's take you for an example. If you wanted to rule the world, 
Okay. Um, you could start out with just your house, um, your property, and your bank account. And you could just imagine then that you control the entire world. But see, everybody knows that's not true because the first time you tell your neighbor, hey, give me a million bucks, your neighbor says, I'm not giving you anything. I don't have to. Then you don't really control everything. But if you not only controlled your house, but every house in the, in the world... If you not only controlled your property, but all of the property in the world suddenly became yours, and then, then all of the money in all of the banks everywhere, whether in paper form or gold or silver or little numbers going through computer lines, if you, all of a sudden you woke up tomorrow and all of that was yours, you're the one in charge. Okay? You can make the rules. You can do whatever you want to because you have control of everything. And here, the, listen to this now. The Bible predicted a religious structure, a religious entity calling for the total control of all of the financial systems, all the markets, buying and selling, total control over every piece of gold and silver in the entire world. A religious structure. The Bible said a religious structure was going to call for this kind of control, and lo and behold, it's happening right in front of our very eyes. It's happening. And by the way, this religious system of Babylon, which that, that is the Vatican, by the way, this religious system of Babylon, uh, Babel and so on, this goes back for years. We have evidence in the scriptures that, and you get this now, false religion always works somehow, some way with, a, a, a large sum of money and, and can use money, can use money to buy and sell whatever it is, whatever kind of power it is that they want. And I want you to think of the spirit that is behind all of this. Her name is, of course, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Now, I've said this a few times and it just makes sense. You stop and think about harlotry the idea of harlotry why is it why do harlots do what they do is it for love no it's obviously not for that why is it they do what they do it's because they're for hire they are for sale you can you can buy them if you have enough money you can buy any person or anything or any service in this world if you want if you have enough money and I want you to think about the 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 difference here I want you to think about religious systems where money does the talking and a religious system that says money or the love of money is the root of all evil we'll read that verse in a little bit I want you to think about the differences between the two so if you have a religious system that uh, denounces money and puts it down on a very 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 low scale of course, everybody, we need a buck or two to pay our bills and to buy food and this and that and the other. I mean, that's just how things work. But I'm talking about money being able to buy religion or religious favors or even salvation itself. And I'm talking about preachers for hire, churches for hire, uh, ministers for hire. I'm talking about all of those things where money is the one that controls everything. Go back to Judges chapter 16. You remember, there's, we have a story here of Samson, who was a mighty man for God. He was a judge, and God had given him strength. God had, but Samson had a weakness. His weakness was in a young lady by the name of Delilah. In fact, that wasn't the only young lady that had been in Samson's life. But Samson had a weakness, and Delilah was that.